so we made it to Springfield safely, thankfully. Um, our trip from Texas to Illinois wasn't pleasant, and for some reason, we really haven't had the best of luck with traveling on the road, that experience being pleasant. Um, the first time we did it from Illinois to Kansas, it was our very first time, and our kids weren't used to being in the car that long, and so they cried and needed to get out of the vehicle very frequently and it was just not pleasant because we had to stop so frequently um and plus we were it was our very first time and so we were learning and um we just had newbie issues and then our second time from kansas to texas was not pleasant because it was basically a whiteout there was a snowstorm and um stuff with that happened and then from Texas to Eureka Springs there was um, road construction and um, it was just it was really bad we went on this road that had the entire road ripped up and so it was just mud they had um, dirt laid down and a, maybe a little bit of rock uh, but mostly dirt and it was raining so it turned into mud so our fifth wheel was kind of sliding on the road and it was a good seven miles like that and we were going real slow um, it was one of those lanes where it was just one lane road and we had to fo follow a pilot car and uh, it was just not good and I wish we would have known about that because we would have avoided it um, but you know, our GPS doesn't tell us anything. It's a car GPS, uh, which, by the way, when we got here, we got rid of that. Um, we were <laughs> very angry uh, that we had gone that way, and we were having trouble when we were on that road, even the truck pulling the RV through the mud. So it was just, it was a really tense situation, and we were praying our whole way through it. <laughs> and um, so there was that, and then we took a wrong turn, and we ended up going through a small town and we missed the sign uh, that said truck route and so we ended up going through a small square and we curb checked and it just made us really uneasy and we ended up having people yell at us um, which was expected but I think we just need to be a bit more prepared so we did download a trucker's uh, GPS on my tablet so after that incident I downloaded the truckers GPS that night at the gas station or the truck stop that we were at and so the rest of the way it knew all the traffic routes uh, the, the routes that had traffic and places to avoid and such so that was fine but then we were driving up to Eureka Springs and if you guys have ever been there it's like all mountains we were pretty much driving it seemed like at times like straight up to the sky it was just awful um, pulling such a huge rig and really nerve-wracking so um, the kids have actually been pretty good my youngest is obsessed with choo-choos so every time he sees a train um, he'll scream mama a choo-choo and then he'll say that for about two more hours and then he'll be done so it's it's the kids aren't that bad um, it's just the driving and the huge rig at, at treacherous trains um, is just uneasy so um, anyways, Eureka Springs was gorgeous. I, I really just don't know if I would ever do that again with such a large rig because the roads were so mountainous and really tiny and we were just really un uncomfortable and it was really unnerving. We probably went about 15 to 20 miles up that whole way. So for about 20, 25 miles, we were going 15 to 20 miles per hour and we had a super long line behind us. I was the one driving, but I really could care less about people behind me because I was trying not to, A, fall off the mountain, and two, not freak out. So um, we eventually made it 
but uh, it ended up being absolutely gorgeous up there. Thankfully, on the way down, we took a different route and it was much easier. We did get pulled over for the first time in our rig right out of Eureka Springs. Um, the police officer was really, really nice. Um, like really nice. He just said because it was misting that I needed to turn on my headlights. I hadn't had my headlights on. So I turned on my headlights and my husband was scrambling to find the insurance, which we did have, but we didn't have it printed out because we just got it renewed. Um, police officer was really nice and just said, you know what, it's cool. Just go ahead and make sure your lights are on. And so he let us go and which was great because the plates on the sticker on our plates for the RV is expired and they've been expired since December I think so we lucked out big time with that and we lucked out the whole way up here because no one even noticed that our sticker was expired so which was a bit irresponsible for of us not to renew but um yeah we'll just renew it while we're here but anyways we were really lucky to not get pulled over for that um Anyways, getting here to Springfield um, kind of dredged up a lot of emotions for both of us. It was really dreary when we got in a couple days ago, and the weather was awful, like really bad. It was storming and lots of rain, and we had to go really slow on the highway because we couldn't really see like 20 yards ahead of us or so, so it was really white. So we get in town we finally get to this place and we had been here once before but we, we didn't we forgot like how in the country it is so <clears throat> we're at the koa in springfield and it's like really kind of on the outskirts of springfield by the lake which is nice um because we did go into town and we did see our old house and it was just really emotional i was crying um Derek was uh, tearing up and it was really just emotional for us. I still have a lot of uh, really deep emotions I haven't dealt with that concern the house. I'm really angry and upset and I'm sad about the situation. You know, we had planned to go full time about two years before we actually did and uh, <coughs> foreclosure was not part of the plan at all it just wasn't we had planned to do like a short sale or something along those lines and it just it didn't work out nothing worked out and so foreclosure happened and it was just it was really painful we went to the door and we saw our names on the door that says uh you know crystal and Derek, please vacate the premises and stuff like that it was just really emotional. A lot of memories in that house. A lot of really, 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 really good memories. But there's also a lot of really, really bad memories. Um, so, it just sucks. We lived in that house for 10 plus years and, you know, had our dogs and our kids in that house. So, I don't know. We talked to our old neighbor for a while and that was nice to just talk to her and reminisce, but it was still really emotional, especially for me. Yeah, I don't know. Being here just brings up a lot of emotions. Um, Derek and I majority feel um, like we don't want to be here. We actually hate being here, um, but we love seeing the people. So it's the town, not the people that we love and care about. So anyways, there's that. Um, I checked the mail at my mother-in-law's house. We get all the mail sent to my mother-in-law's and we found out, um, if any of you remember about our identity getting stolen uh, a couple months ago. Well, my husband and I got insurance through Amazon, health insurance, and we got a letter from them and it said that um, all of our information got stolen. Their, their system got hacked or something like that. So that's how our identity got stolen, was through the health insurance we had through Amazon. Um, and the letter stated that they are offering us a free two-year subscription for, um, uh, I don't know, security over our credit or something like that, uh, which really doesn't help the situation because our, our 
identity really has been stolen by somebody. So uh, it just stinks. So I'm not sure exactly what the process I need to take on that. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, on a different note, we are selling our RV. Um, not a joke. We are really selling our RV. Um, coming up from Texas to Illinois, we kind of just realized uh, how much we hate pulling a l really large RV. I really don't know how the people who pull like a 42 foot or anything like anything bigger than a 36 foot. I mean, I just don't know how you guys pull such a really large rig. Um, and it may just be because we're so inexperienced still that it is a bit unnerving for us to pull something so large. So the goal is to sell our RV and get something a good seven to 10 feet smaller. So since we're going up the coast this uh, summer, um, falling off highway one is really just not something that we want to do. And I know that if we're really careful with 36 foot, we'll be fine, but we really do just want something smaller. So our goal is to get something smaller and we've actually been looking for a while. We've found a couple things in our price range and just so you know, our price range is about $6,000. Um, so if we sell our rig um, for a minimum of $4,000, we should be set to be able to get the new rig and new tires for that rig um, and be okay. Anything else cosmetically um, can be saved when Derek starts working at Amazon again this year. <coughs> um, we've had our rig on Craigslist for about a week now and we put it on like RV classifieds on Facebook and stuff like that. But if anyone knows of anyone who's looking for um, a fifth wheel or someone who wants to start full timing but can't afford that much, I mean like $4,500 is not that much for a reliable roadworthy rig. So yeah, um, spread the word. I'll probably be doing a video about just our rig to post that on other pages. Um, so people can see the inside more in depth and know like its flaws and stuff we've done and such like that. But if anyone really does know anyone who's looking for a rig, um, we are in Illinois and it's totally fine on the road. We've taken it many places as you guys have seen. Um, and there's really not many issues besides uh, cosmetic. So if you guys really know anyone, let them know. But um, that's all I have for now. I'm sure eventually um, I might videotape something that you guys can walk down memory lane with us. So anyways, I'm really happy that we made it safely. And this is our campground. I know the sun's setting right now, but we are, you can't really see our rig from here, but <clears throat> That is actually someone who lives here at KOA, but it's not associated with KOA at all. Their house is just here. It's really random because this place is way out in the country. They have bikes for rent and they have a miniature golf course over there. And then behind the miniature golf course, there's a swimming pool and both of those things cost. It's really weird. <clears throat> I don't know if that's a standard thing with all KOAs, but kind of... I don't know, it's just weird to pay to go swimming. And then right behind the slide is a jumping pillow. I've never seen one, but apparently it's like a trampoline pillow type thing. Um, and this is the rest of the campground. It's really small compared to Jellystone, the last campground we were at. Oh, there's our rig. So they kind of hit us, like I said in previous videos, they were really unsure about even accepting us because our rig is older. Um, but that really nice class A that's next to us is the owners and <laughs> they don't live in it. They have an actual house down the road, but uh, their class A is basically new and they hit us behind their class A, which is kind of funny. Um, but they have cabins here, which are really quaint. My husband has already started work camping here. He's mowed all this lawn and 
all the way down to the front. But it's really nice. The kids enjoy it here and they absolutely love seeing their friends and family. So that's nice. But um, I'm sure there'll be more video to come. So that's all I got for now. Talk to you later, YouTube.